Hi, I'm Dr. Rebecca Kennedy, a family medicine physician. And in this three-part video series, I'll be discussing a neuroscience approach to long COVID and CFSME. In this first video, I'll be showing you that recovery is possible. In the second video, we'll go over the neuroscience of why you can recover. And the third video will cover the science about long COVID specifically. So let's start with some recovery stories. These are just a few of the many, many stories of recovery. Brain fog, um, memory loss, difficulty walking, difficulty breathing, lack of stamina, an itchy rash, hearing irregularities, heart irregularities, pain in my extremities, insomnia, persistent headaches, confusion driving. Really horrible symptoms, burning in my feet, um, I get this feeling of a sore throat, a fatigue that I could only describe as extreme jet lag. It completely overtook my life, yeah. Um, I was just so terrified. I was, because I just wasn't getting better, I was getting these really strange symptoms every day, the most terrible insomnia. Long COVID uh, continued for 15 months. I was spending like almost 20 hours a day in my bed, in the dark, in silence, doing pretty much nothing. I just very abruptly got sick, but I dropped from what I'd say is a healthy 100% down to, you know, as low as 10 or 15%, basically wiped out of normal life and didn't understand why. To me that I was, my body was seriously in trouble. It was a pretty low point. I thought I was dying. But prior to COVID, I had been extremely active. And after COVID, that all just really shrink. Um, heart palpitations, breathing issues. I, I couldn't hardly walk without just being completely out of breath. It's just so just like exhausted that it was just like having a thousand pound weight on you because I was so far down when I met you that mm -hmm. I wasn't sure that I still had enough in me to get the things done that was going to bring me back. Uh, I actually wasn't able to get into bed at all for about four weeks straight. I had very high light and sound sensitivity, as well as just really severe fatigue. Um, and basically everything put me into a post-exertional malaise. What I learned from her made sense right away. She backed it up with pages of references, some of them articles peer-reviewed in medical journals and names of other people looking into the phenomena. She did not suggest that what I was dealing with was a mystery. She told me she had an idea exactly what was likely going on. I could tell intuitively that she was correct. It made perfect sense. My impression when I listened was that getting very sick with COVID was traumatic in the acute stage, and my entire body had gone on into ongoing emergency response. My autoimmune system was sending danger signals to my brain and the brain was responding with appropriate stimuli to deal with the new disease. Because I was so sick, my different systems could not find my previous healthy rhythms and behaviors. For the past three years and counting, my brain kept responding with pain messages and bodily responses in different places, different days. Dr. Kennedy gave me a set of exercises, none of which required physical exertion, focus, or even standing up. It's very tough to get started. But once you do, there's just such an improvement that you, <laughs> you don't go back. Now, four years beyond contracting COVID, I can go for brisk walks, take care of our house, get down and play with my grandson on the floor. I have my life back and I look forward to the next adventure. All of the feels so bad, so good. And yeah, it really works. I'm now able to do all my former activities without restriction. This summer, I was able to spend days outside at the cottage, swimming three, four times a day and drawing and cooking and having a life. And I realized it just dawned on me, you know, like, I feel normal. I'm at 100%. I was kind of shocked. <laughs> um, but it's, it's durable. It's not a transitory flicker. Literally the first day after my uh, first coaching session, I got into bed for the first time in about four weeks. About three days later, I took a shower for the first time. 
Um, maybe a week after that, I took the black garbage bags down off the windows. Um, maybe three, four days after that, I was spending most of my day out of bed. And probably about four or five days after that is today. Um, and now I would say about 90 or 95 percent of my, my symptoms are gone. I'm radically better. And it took three weeks for that to happen after ages of, you know, going to doctors and trying to, to figure out what was physically wrong with me. I can interact and do things with my kids. I'm grocery shopping again, um, taking care of most of the things in the house. And so yeah. it feels like that dark place of it's too far past. It's just keep going. Yeah. And just take it one step at a time. Be really nice to yourself. Really foundational to my improvement has been infusing gratitude and joy into my daily life. I found that attitude matters so very much for healing. And thank you so much for the opportunity to share my journey. So how did I get here? I'm a family medicine physician for nearly 25 years. I've seen over 70,000 patients in my career. I was a primary care physician at Kaiser Permanente for many years and was the lead of the long COVID clinic there. I was one of a small team who assessed all of the patients with long COVID among the half million Kaiser members. I'm a board of the nonprofit, the Association for the Treatment of Neuroplastic Symptoms, and I'm a member of the Oslo Chronic Fatigue Consortium. Many studies have shown that at least 40% of all the problems that patients come into primary care for are medically unexplained. That means that nearly half the day as a primary care physician is spent not being able to really effectively help patients. That's incredibly frustrating for both the patients and the physicians. One of the areas of medically unexplained symptoms is with long COVID and CFS. It's still a major health problem. Some consider it one of the most pressing chronic illness challenges of the decade. Tens of millions of people are affected worldwide. I've assessed hundreds and hundreds of patients, many of whom were struggling with overwhelming and debilitating symptoms. I searched for years to look for other answers to better explain these sorts of medically unexplained symptoms. And more importantly, to find solutions to effectively help the symptoms. I was fortunate enough to come upon this model that I use now of the new science that has been used for years by clinicians around the world and includes rigorous scientific studies. These solutions are based on a better understanding of the brain and neuroplasticity. It's an approach that teaches concrete tools about how to rewire the brain. As with any new science, it can be extremely hard to believe that it is true. It certainly was for me when I learned about this, but it was patient after patient saying to me, wow, this is the first thing a doctor has told me that actually makes sense as well as seeing patient after patient get better that kept me going. And this is a short video from our nonprofit, the Association for the Treatment of Neuroplastic Symptoms. So my first reaction was that I didn't fully understand how this approach could apply to me. What do you mean there's pain that my brain is generating? That sounds ridiculous. Like, what does that have to do with this MRI I have with the herniated disc? I don't know about that. I am in a wheelchair, and this should help me. These exercises should help me to walk again. I couldn't exercise. I couldn't move. I couldn't focus. I couldn't even remember the names of close friends. I would have never believed that all my symptoms were caused by my brain. I'm Dario Zagar, I'm a neurologist with Yale University, and I've seen hundreds of people with chronic pain and other issues improve with these treatments. I'm Brandon Yarns at UCLA, and I've seen two-thirds of patients with improvements. At 80 percent, I have seen the majority of my patients. hundreds of patients. at least 80 percent. 80 percent? The majority of my patients. The majority? Hundreds of patients. Hundreds of patients. Thousands. Dozens. Over 7,000 people treated over 4,500 patients thousands and thousands approach. of people. The Boulder Back Pain Study found that of the people we treated with chronic back pain, average duration of pain was 10 years. Three quarters of them were virtually pain-free in one month. In a study at Harvard, Mike Danino, our colleague, found 
that two-thirds of the people he treated, again, with chronic low back pain, were virtually pain-free within a couple months. Pain gets really learned in the nervous system, and just as we can learn symptoms, we can unlearn them. It just works. Being where I am now compared to then is like, um, I mean, it's like, a, it's like a gift every day. It feels like a second life. It's pretty hard to put into words what it means to me to have gotten better, but I will say that uh, it was my fondest dream that I could. I couldn't have even imagined that I would have, and when I did, I felt like better than I've ever felt in my entire life. is a paradigm shift in thinking. It's not just a small incremental change, but a massive shift. I'll be discussing how the brain and nervous system can provide those answers and how that makes sense with the missing pieces of science that is based on an approach that started with successfully treating chronic pain. Again, a paradigm shift in thinking is not easy to wrap your brain around on the one hand, but yet on the other hand, as you start to understand it more, it really is the only thing that fits all of the pieces together. I only see patients with these sort of diagnoses every single day, and I love my job because now I know how to help them. I've worked with hundreds of patients using this approach and restored many to complete health, all with self-management tools, no medicines or external procedures. This is a study done at Harvard using this approach that showed significant benefit in people with long COVID that decreased eight different symptoms in 13 weeks. Recovery is possible. In the next video, I'll explain what the missing pieces of science are in order to fully understand this. And then in the third video, I'll discuss the specific science and studies done on long COVID and why this condition fits with the neuroplastic model and therefore why it's possible for you to recover.